Good morning! Good morning, everybody! Well, a happy, 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 happy uh, Monday. Yes, it's Monday, but it's May. So Mondays aren't the same in the spring and the summer. Mondays suck in the fall and winter. Um, although football season, everything's great. They're not as bad, Mondays. A little bit palatable in the, when it's in nice weather. It's supposed to get nicer. We're going to be in the 70s all week. It's going to be, going to be great. This is the Anthony Gargano Show. We're brought to you by Truemark Financial Credit Union. Check out truemark.com, so that's P-H-L-Y, or stop at your local branch to learn more about the credit union difference at Truemark Financial today. Well, it was, a, it was a good weekend other than yesterday for the fight in Phillies where uh, Wheeler, I, you know, just talk about a clunker. I mean, he just had a clunker, right? That was that deal. Bad day yesterday for Zach uh, Bullpen, no good. Bats gave it their best, but still they go down. They'll, they do they take care of business. And now it's all to the Mets. The bleeping Mets overheard during our pre-show meeting. I think it was Andrew, our uh, fine producer who's back in the fold, said the bleeping Mets. And that's how kind of how they're known. That's right. The bleeping Mets. We get New York for four. Yeah, I'm tired of New York too. So we'll discuss that series. Lots to do today. But to begin the show, I want to talk about prodigies. The, the, it's unbelievable, right? The story that is going on with the union. Because I open up the Wall Street Journal. I get a, uh, I get a, I get a, uh, a, a note about the Wall Street Journal and uh, Kevin Sullivan, who is a local kid. We talked about this. In fact, JP brought this up to me the other day. And he talked about Kevin Sullivan and how he's 14 years old. The union, he's placed for the union academy. The union signed him to a $2 million contract. He'll play here until he's 18 and then... He'll go play for Man City because of uh, England's rules, uh, work rules, labor rules, um, the child labor rules. He has to stay here for the next four years, and then he'll go to Manchester City. And he's an amazing story, just an incredible story, 14 years old. And so uh, yesterday, we have a Mother's Day baseball tournament. So we have 11U, so my, my Massimo plays 11U baseball, and we had a nice weekend. Saturday, two games. Yesterday, two games. And it was, I think my wife's used to it right now because we spent our Mother's Day at the baseball field, right? And the, all the moms get together, and they have mimosas, right? So they have the champagne. Who brought the orange? Who brought the peach? They had the bellinis going. Like, they were doing, that's the moms, right? Like, you know. God bless them. They're all there for the kids, and and we had the and it was a miserable day. All right, it was cold, spitting rain, but it was fun. Anyway, there's a kid that plays on one of these teams who is unbelievable. All right, so my, we play my Mosmo's team is the Warriors, and they're a good squad. Like the, a lot of tremendous kids on that team. The kid, you know, Moscow was down the bottom. Like those kids are are really, really good, good ball players. So anyway, so we get to the final and we play. There's a team called the Assassins. Right? I brought that up to the group the other day. I was telling them about it, and, and VG's like, "Wow, the Assassins!" I like they sound like a movie like villain, right? Like if you if you can imagine. Any other uh, like kids movie, right? And the the team that's like the nasty great team that they're all like stud athletes. That's the assassins, but they're a great bunch of kids. But the best player on the team is a kid named Gavin Mason. And I'm watching this kid yesterday. So we had the it's the championship game. It was a great game, right? Our boys hung tough. This team's good. I I, I think this team is one of the best teams in probably all of Jersey, 
certainly South Jersey. They're really good. Well coached. They're just a really good team. But they have a kid, Gavin Mason, who hit two bombs yesterday. He's got 14 home runs already. We're like just like, we're not like we're the Phillies, right? And we play every day. He's got 14 home runs. It's it's unbelievable. He's got close to 50 for his career for starting at eight U. <laughs> He's a lefty. And if I told you he looks like Jim Tomey, He's he looks like Jim Tomey. It's uncanny. He's a mini Tony, and the ball just flies off his bat. I mean, absolutely flies. He can also pitches. He he primarily catches, but he can pitch too. He throws seventy, right? I mean, it's unbelievable what this kid does. He he's eleven years old. In fact, he won't. Uh, he'll turn. Tw- I think he just turned twelve. He plays eleven. U. He just turned twelve. It's tremendous. I would draft him now if I was one of these major league teams. And the wonderful thing about him, he loves four for four. He's a Phillies, Flyers, Sixers, Eagles. Great kid. Like, sweet Harvey kid. A lot of times you get these kids that are that good, and they're elitist. Like, even at that age, they're like an, this elite ball player who is, you know, they're, they're not really warm. This kid's a sweetheart. Just a dynamite kid. Great family, the Mason family. Uh, love their, I just love the family. It's a great dad's tremendous, you know, really cool. And the, uh, but this kid, well, I got to show you a video check this out. Cause we're talking about prodigies and I want to get into this and make this as a side issue as we go on and do stuff. You know, we always hit spring and summer and it gets kind of, you know, sports wise, we're down the baseball. So I want to do a little bit of a project with our youth. All right, but take a look, Andrew. Play this video. This is a uh, this is this is Gavin at the plate. So that's off the game changer. Now, what do you see? This. So he, he sees a lefty. Let me look at him. He's big. I mean, he's all all five at 11, 12, five, 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 six. Now here it comes. Where you see the ball jumping off his back? This is tremendous. Now no, no, he's going to get. Here it is. Boom. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, I mean, seriously. Are, are you kidding me with that? The ball just fly. Boom. Perfect swing. It's incredible. And this brings me to Kevin Sullivan. Now imagine this. I'm talking about an 11 U ball player, right? Caven Sullivan, 14 years old. So I, I open up the Wall Street Journal. I'm fascinated by this story of Caven Sullivan. I mean, these are great. It's a great Philadelphia family, the Sullivans from the Northeast. I mean, they're real Philadelphia people. And this kid's 14 years old. Manchester City, right? Like Manchester City, which is the Yankees of the Premier League, signs him. I mean, are you kidding me? 14. He's 5'5", 150 pounds. I mean, and he's 14. He's he's that good. It's funny. I, I was talking to, to JP. I'll bring JP on in a second. But I was talking to JP. And he's telling me about his vision, about how he sees the field. And he sees the field with just different than any, forget people his age, but people like tremendous players. Because I'm thinking to myself, how does a kid distinguish himself at that age, right? Like, how does that happen? And it, everybody that has watched him. It, he just pops when you see a kid, and I just brought up the baseball equivalent, right? You see a kid just, you know, he's a little different, right? Or she's a little different than everybody else out there. And Kevin Sullivan is a lot different, right? A lot different. He signs at $2 million. Imagine this. And this is as a father of two sons 
who both play sports, and I'm so into the youth sport thing. I love it. I, if I told you, I look forward to our games, like our whatever it is. I look forward to. I look forward to watching them and teaching them and helping out, and I, I love it. I just love it. And so the story of Caven Sullivan strikes home. It's a local dude, and this is a worldwide story that he's a prodigy, and he's from Northeast Philadelphia. Amazing story, just amazing. And so I urge you to get a hold of me, either on social media uh, or, you know, you could – Shoot me a, an email here. We'll make sure we have it. But I, I want to hear about the exploits of our youth, right? Like, I want to hear about, we want to trump that up because it's it's just a treasure. And I'm thinking about Kevin Sullivan, and I was watching young Gavin Mason, and uh, I was excited by it. Like, we're just seeing the next one. And our area, the Delaware Valley, has become an incredible, incredible fertile ground for prospects, every sport. We talk about Marvin Harrison Jr., right? Like, I mean, dominate college football. We got a lot of kids, a lot of football kids that are coming out of here, right? Now we're talking about soccer. We have a ton of baseball, Major League Baseball. I'm watching the kid Schneider uh, from the Blue Jays, who's one of our kids, lead off over the weekend. I mean, these are Delaware Valley kids doing big things across major pro sports. So I, I really want to keep tabs on it. Good morning, JP. Buenos dias, cuz. How you doing? Happy how, Monday. Happy Monday. How was your mother's day? Uh, it was good. Well, I mean. Baseball? It was, it was baseball. It was fun. Yeah. Wait, were you guys at National, the Cherry Hill National League field, or was that that, that was Mason that was uh, in there? That was Mason. That that wasn't yesterday. That was, uh, that's where I quit baseball. Which oh, is really? I think that's where I played growing up. No, did you really? Yeah. No, that was, um, that wasn't yesterday. He had two bombs yesterday. Oh, my God. Uh, I recognize that field, though. Yeah, no, that wasn't yesterday. The, two, yesterday, we, we, we had a home in Swedesboro. Oh, cool. Cool. Is where nice. we play out. Uh, no. By the way, the, that was popping off, brought to you by Ollie Pop. Find your favorite Olipop flavor at your nearest Wawa. Yeah, it, it was, uh, dude, I mean, just, I'm watching this kid play. I mean, he had two bombs yesterday. That's insane. Two. And it's crazy because, like, you know, you always bring up the youth, right? And it's so important to have these kids just fall in love with the sports, right? And when you're looking at the larger landscape of sports, right? Like, listen, not all these kids are become professional athletes, which is fine, right? But if you want to be in that realm... Listen, expansions happen through all these American leagues. Soccer is now a thing. You know, kids can now dream of becoming a European star. Oh, by the way, you're talking about Caven. We have Brandon Aronson and Mark McKenzie representing over in Europe and for the U.S. men's national team. So it's really cool. It's that it's that extra step of pride that we have here as Philadelphia. Well, tell me about it. Do me a favor. Explain to me yeah. Caven. Yeah. All right, Caven. First of all, this is a great Philadelphia family. For sure. With a, you know, has a lineage in the sport, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so just for some context, so Caven's grandfather actually coached our head coach, Jim Curtin. He, and so during the press conference, if anyone watched it, listen, Jim was a little emotional because that was the one guy, that's the first guy who really taught him about the game. And Jim was ready to shed some tears because of that. So now coming full circle, seeing Jim now manage and coach he, Larry Sullivan, that's his grandpa father, Larry Sullivan's grandson, and both of his grandsons, because Quinn, let's, let's not forget Quinn. Quinn is also on the team. It is really cool. Brandon, uh, who is Caven and Quinn's father, runs a soccer clinic in the area. So the soccer ties to the Philadelphia area are very strong. But Caven, because you mentioned at the top of it, he, he sees well, the game at the next level. Let, let's, talk, let's discuss this on the air. So you were, because I was asking a lot of questions, and, and uh, you know the sport really well. What distinguishes himself? Like at 14 to catch the eye of Manchester City. Yeah. So, I mean, so the, the this kid has been playing for the U.S. youth team since he was 10 years old, right? So he's really played above his age bracket. And you talked about the vision. That's really the main thing. The kid sees the field at, at an older age. Like he doesn't see the field like a 14-year-old kid. Another thing, too, is that well, these That's kids... That's interesting, the prodigy aspect of it. Yeah. The prodigy aspect, they are mature like beyond their years like they have this 
old soul. Sometimes I believe in the reincarnation of these incredible athletes, right? Like that they can see it, right? It's it's, it's uncanny, and that's kind of what you're explaining. Yeah, and like the other thing too is like you hear a lot of the time some of these great athletes, they're like the youngest sibling of like four or five brothers, right? He has a bunch of brothers. He played with them growing up, and we talked about his who his father and his grandfather. So I have to expect that all North Catholic the, guy, yeah, right? all <laughs> all that that soccer tutelage is helping this young kid out. And the thing is, at that age, cause like it's tough for these kids to have a set position. But Caven, he's pretty set. Like he is a an attacking midfielder. Now with the union, we talked about it with depth. It's going to be tough because we're very stacked at that position. But he's going to have to learn now that he's with the senior team. The physicality of the sport because now you're playing with grown men you're not playing with 14 year old well kids. that was my question like in any other sport the idea of a 14 year old playing like, you know maybe golf right like i could see <laughs> something like that but in every other sport it's impossible right because of the physical nature like we talk about you know baseball obviously you know you could be 18 20 Mm-hmm. Right, Fresh nobody out of high younger school. than I mean, Doc Gooden was 18 years old when he's the Phillies are playing the Mets, and I remember the story of Gooden when he came up, and you know he had a, a, a an amazing 12-6 curveball, he had a, a fastball with a with a, a tail on it, right, with blaze, but like you're 18, at 14, you, I don't, football speaks for itself, right? Basketball speaks for itself, like. LeBron was a man child. And yeah, you saw one for every one of these one and dunners or every one of these kids that came right out of high school, it took them a while to establish themselves. Yeah. Like LeBron and Kobe were rare. Yeah. And that's kind of the plan, you know, hearing from Jim and Ernst and what they're trying to do with Kaven. Like the first thing that's the most important part about Kaven, now that he's staying here until 18, is just allowing him to be a kid. Because as you can, as you guys can clearly tell, you talked about a Wall Street Sports is covering this story. Like that's a lot of Wall pressure. Street Journal, yeah. Wall, Wall Street Journal, a lot of pressure for a 14 year old kid. So it's really important for the union to just allow him to be a kid. But also too, this is what the plan is with the U: developing young, hoping that they can help the senior team. And I know the part that you don't like, selling them off to Europe so they can be ready for when they well, do go to Europe. Well, I mean, you know, it goes against. See, this is where – now, I'll defer to you because you know the sport inside and out. I don't, Andrew, uh, our producer does. I don't know the sport like that. And, you know, I could, I admire its beauty and how it's played in skill. But the concept of, you know, being a minor league team – I mean, basically you're telling me that we're just a minor league team. So th- the problem with the MLS is that we started, like, centuries after what these other no, leagues have done. I, and that's I, so we're intellectually we're, I understand it all. Like I get, you know, money and I get, you know, power. At some point though, the, and this is where it's gotta come, right? At some point, someone's gonna make a big investment into the MLS. Yeah. Like with all the money that's in the United States, mm-hmm. when does that when do they start buying players and start competing with Europe? You know, when, when you start complete, uh, competing with Premier League and Bundesliga and, and Serie A, when does when that start? So that's for a, your Porto. That, yeah, that's a that's a great question to ask for some of these millionaires, billionaires that we have here in this country. All it is is investment cause. Right now, what the MLS is trying to do, because they want to compete, they really want that quality to get better, right? So the past couple of years, they have been able to develop some young kids, not only here, but outside the country as well. And so their hope is, is that for right now, the quality will be good because these kids are developing and they're pretty damn good kids. And so well, here's, the, here's the question. Does the, is there an audience to support it and here in the United States? Yes. I, I think it's proven that like we, I think we talked like about that Friday. I mean, that's what, I mean, there that's is. basically what we're talking about. Do they, can they support? Because again, if we know that people are dying to be wealthy, people love to be in sports. But the business has to make sense. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I tell a lot of my, my, listen, a lot of my fellow soccer content creators right now, I know it's tough right now because there's not a lot of money in that, but because the big event is in two years. Yeah. 2026, that's what we're all banking for, that World Cup, because that's going to be the biggest stage of them all, not just in soccer, right. but in sports. So that's going to be able a great opportunity for you to show to a lot of these billionaire investors, look what's going on. Look what we just did at the World Cup. 
come on over, invest in the Philadelphia Union, invest in the New England Revolution, these type of clubs, and that way we can get that money influxing and we can compete so, with some of those big teams well, that you're saying. Caven, like when, when will we see Caven? Question. So that's what we're going to try to find out. I, first, he needs to figure out his way through that depth chart. Now, he's very talented. How talented is he? Are you talking next year? Like ballpark. I'm not going to hold you I'm to it. hoping at the end, by the end of this year, we see him out on the pitch. But he's still got some things to work on. Right now, he has a little bit of a, a little injury, a little one. So he was, that's why he wasn't there last Saturday. But he's going to get in the practice. He's going to be with the guys on a day-to-day. -day, and then by hopefully by the end of this year, we do see him that's out wild. there. Yeah. And then and hopefully next year, we could see him meet, possibly being a rotating piece. Well, now Andrew's got a jersey. What, what jersey do you have on? That's Liverpool. A I'm a Liverpool fan. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. got Liverpool. What do you got? The Liverpool. Well, I was going to add. Because I know in, you're itching. I was going to add into what you guys were saying. And I think for like the appeal in the United States, I think a big thing for the MLS is that we have the World Cup coming here in 2026. That's right. Big one. And I think that's going to help kind of pull people into soccer. Because soccer is competing in the United States with football. I mean, come on. The NFL is one of the biggest things here. It's oh, hard again, to get past you, that. I don't think it can coexist. I mean, you know, it's not like it's a, it's, it's a competition in the sense of, like, you can't be both fan of both sports. And, and, you know, you're a sports fan. You can love basketball and baseball and football and soccer and hockey. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but, and I think it's also another thing is the stigma around soccer. And that the like the flopping and like people don't uh, see I mean, it listen, as that, I wouldn't get caught up in that. I think that stuff happens. NBA is the second biggest league yeah, in, this, in this country. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get caught up. But, in I that. mean, you're not you're not 100 percent wrong. I think like there was a stigma decades ago that kind of the stench is stuck on here in 2024. But like, listen, we're American sports fans. We watch the best Amer American football league. We watch the best basketball league. We watch the best baseball and best hockey league in the world. So for a lot of American sports fans, it's tough to get on, on board with the MLS because unfortunately, we're not the best league in the world, let alone the best league on this side of the world just yet. So that's one of the tough parts too. So that's why, like you said, we need that investment to make these, these, all these clubs, not just Inter Miami, not just LAFC, but all these clubs, a great product mm. out there to watch on a day to day. And expansion's growing. We have San Diego coming in next year, yeah. and it's going to keep coming. Maybe Vegas will come in the full. Hopefully, Detroit, Pittsburgh, these type of towns. So it, it starts ha here with these young stars, and hopefully, well, I love it, dude. I, I got to tell, and I love the kids. I, I do exactly. I love the kids. I told you about, you know, and there's a lot of them. Like I just mentioned, Gavin. Because we played him yesterday, and he hit two bombs in the championship game. Yeah. And that was heartbreaking, too. When our kid Brian hit a bomb <laughs> to bring us back. Oh, uh, we lost by three. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, because. yeah it, was a, it, was a, it was great. Great baseball. Anyway. We all silly like the mayor.